posts out here. Boo, 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 boo. And boo, 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 boo. all right, let's get this started. Hey, Chicken Skill, how you doing, sir? Or ma'am, I still don't know. All right, so let's see. Am I actually streaming? Yep, good. Okay. Alrighty, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, lenses. Uh, the reason why is in my actual uh, Electron app and things like that, I'm going to start using uh, lenses with my reducers. And they're pretty cool, so I just wanted to talk about them, kind of, kind of show them off, showcase some of the stuff they can do. So what they are is just as the name applies they let you focus on a specific value in a complex data structure hey how's it going Eric R? how are you doing so what I mean by that uh, is focusing on a uh, specific value in a complex data structure or specific uh, area like say I want to get the name of the first current member inside of this how I've been ignored. Oh, I thought I said hi when I first started. I'm sorry, chicken skill. My bad. My bad totally. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not very good. Um, so anyway, what lenses allow you to do is when you have a complex data structure, like say you are getting data, I'm doing pretty darn good. Um, say you're getting data from a uh, a uh, web API or something like that and it's coming into your front end app. You might get a conglomeration or a huge chunk of data that kind of looks something like this, right? So a lot of times you don't want to rely on your uh, API provider to massage the data for your current needs. So what lenses allow you to do is work and transform that data um, and uh, perform and do mute or do changes and things like that on it, and return back a new copy of that data. Um, they're very, very handy, very cool little things to do, um, but they make it very easy to transform uh, non-mutating copies of your data. So we can change it, get a new copy of our entire data structure back with the changes, and keep our other stuff clean. Okay, so they're based on some solid mass. I'm not going to get, there's a lot of theory and stuff behind them. I'm going to dig a little deep on like how they work behind the scenes, but I'm not going to go full on math nerd or anything like that. But there's two parts to them. They're really, really cool uh, and very easy to work with. That part's really cool. And then there's the how they work. So I'm only going to touch a little bit on the how they work as we dig a little deeper into it. Uh, when when we need to uh, explain parts of their functionality, I guess. But we're not going to go too deep. But one thing to know is they're based on two algebras. They're based on a functor algebra and a foldable algebra, right? So um, the way Ramda, and we're going to be using Ramda for most of these examples, they kind of hide the foldable stuff and how they set up their call chain. So you'll mostly see them act as functors, um, and you don't really see the foldable part until you start composing lenses together. Um, and we'll get into that once we get into the composition of them. So yeah, uh, lenses are pretty awesome. Uh, chicken skill. They're they're really neat. So how do you use them, right? So say we want to go ahead and we'll just do a real simple grab here. Say we want to get, we have this structure called band. Say we want to get the name there. There's many ways of setting these up, but the main way to do it is with this lens uh, function that Ramda provides. So what the lens function, or what this takes is, uh, if you look here, it takes a setter function. I'm sorry, a getter function, and you notice this takes a signature of a function that takes in a string and then returns a uh, any value. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, and then the second function that we pass in is going to be uh, the setter function. So this is something that will actually take in a value, take of what to set it to. Uh, transducers are 
are kind of they're related um, uh, the, they just use a different approach uh, kind of on the back end but they are related uh, transducers are related to these maybe I'll do a thing on transducers too after we get the uh, lenses down um, so that basically takes a setter function for it uh, and you can tell that by this it takes an any uh, takes a structure and then returns another structure and then when we pass those two functions we get a lens back which is a functor we'll get into kind of that there so for our setter here we're going to use an r.prop which r.prop basically takes in a string value and then as the second parameter takes in a uh, an object and then it will use whatever your string parameter is to reference that key and then return the value for that key. So that's going to be our getter. Uh, for most of the time when we're digging into uh, objects, that's a really good getter there. Uh, the other thing is the setter. Now this associate here is a three, three parameter function. It takes, uh, we can look here, a string and then that string is going to take a value, uh, the value of what you want it set to, and then it's going to take in a key uh, or an array, uh, or no, I'm sorry, not an array, an object, and then return a new object that has the value of that key set. Um, also, if that key isn't present, it will add it to it. Otherwise, it's going to override it. So that's what associate does. And that's what we're going to use here for our getter function or our setter function. There are other ways um, that they have you, uh, there's easier ways to set these up, but I'm just showing this this way right now. So how you use them, it's all nice. What this will get us, what name is, is this gets us a lens that's pointing to anything that uh, reads a name value from. So if I were to pass this in, it's going to be reading or pointing at this KMFDM value here. Oh, look at that. We don't have, eh, that's what we'll do. We'll do a concat on that for funsies. Okay, so what we want to do is kind of talk about how they're used now. Uh, we know how to create them. It's a little weird, uh, I know, um, but basically you just say how to get the function or how to get the value and then how to set the value. So there's three functions that are used um, typically to, to uh, work on lenses in Ramda. There's a view function, a set function, and an over function. So what the view function does, we'll just go ahead and uncomment this here, and actually let me get my ugly mug out of the way. We will go to just screen, bam, there we go. Because we're going to be using all of this. So if you notice, that went ahead and brought back the value of KMFDM because we passed band in. Uh, to this view function. The view function takes a lens, the thing that's pointing to it, and it takes in the data structure that it's going to point to uh, as the second parameter. Um, and again, since this is Ramda, this is fully curryable. So I could have just uh, created a partially applied view that's already partially applied with the lens. So, But here we're just going ahead and passing it as the second value. So that's a view, and if you notice, the view doesn't really do much, it just uh, returns back that value. Um, if we were to point in another part, like say members, it would show a object with current and past and all of their children in there. All right, so the other function that we have is a set function. Now the set is really, really cool. So what set does is it takes a lens and then it takes the value that you wish to set that lens to, uh, the value that the lens is pointing to, to, <laughs> to, to, like, ball like a ballerina. And then it takes, of course, the data structure that you're going to be working on. So if you look here, where we have our set uh, over on the right here, notice how it's set that to MDFMK. So all we do is pass that in, and it gets set to MDFMK. Now if we look, uh, we'll go ahead GC this and we will GC this, um, well I guess we won't because that would be pointless. After we do our mutation, you'll notice that the original band there, and we can go up, 
page up, page up. See how it's been set to MDFMK there? But when we go down to the original band, it's set to KMFDM. So it didn't actually mutate the original object, which is really good. That's, that's what we want to do. Uh, we want to make sure that there's no mutation on any data that we pass in. So that's super awesome. Now the other one that they provide is uh, something called over. Okay, so for over, let's create a new function here. And we're going to call this uh, make lower. So say we want to take a function or uh, say we want to take in a value, uh, whatever it is, and make lower is equal to a. And then we want to return a dot uh, to lowercase, lower cast. That's adorable. Okay, and then this is going to return the lowercase version of uh, make lower, or of whatever we pass in. So now what over does is allows you to map over the wrapped value that's in there. So if we want to map, I can put a function in and it's going to map it over the value. So uh, how we would do that is we go good old log here and we're going to log with r dot over and r dot over is going to take the lens which is going to be name and it's going to take our mapping function make lower and from there we will pass in the data now hopefully this doesn't error Oh, data is not defined ba bam band some people huh Okay, so now if we look at the name, this returned us a whole new object and it mapped over the uh, actual value there. So since we pass in our function, over is just going to take whatever function you have and it's going to map over it. Uh, pretty much just what it says on the tin. And again, I was just showing here that this is a curried uh, function. Uh, so like later on we can pass in say it still should work even if you pass it in like that but we can use partial application on these to actually set them up which is very very important so and we'll also take a look over and uh, show the original as well so if we look at band we'll notice that even though we did the mapping over the function it still came back as KMFDM it didn't actually do the two lower on it. So that's pretty nifty. Um, it keeps all your mutations, all your stuff uh, nice. Now the reason why this over is great is because we could do some complex transformations on it by doing it in a, comp in a functional composition. And uh, so that way we can grow how we want to mutate what this is looking at based on certain conditions or things like that and break the, each mutation or each change down into a small simple function and then just compose those functions together. And then those functions, because a lens is a functor and we're using over, it's going to map that map. So anyway, it's, it's pretty powerful. I really like over. Over works very well and you'll tend to when you're doing transformation stuff you tend to use over a lot more than like set and view um, okay so uh, so with that uh, I made all these notes for future for present me and I left them all vague just so I could uh, uh, I don't know be vague right now so the next thing uh, you might notice it's a little it's kind of nasty like setting these up um, like we could do the name like this but another way of doing that name is we could come down here and let's throw this here oops uh, we'll do const name is equal to uh, ram to provide some really good uh, helper methods for just setting these up so if I really want to get at that prop and like uh, kind of use a default where prop is what's going to be used and the uh, R associate is used for the setter, they provide uh, things like lens 
oops, lens prop. So now all I really need to do is specify the prop just like that instead of setting up the getter and the setter. Let's just make sure there's no errors on that. Oh, lens is not a function. Uh, where is that? Return lens function. Well, isn't that adorable? What am I missing here? Okay, so lens prop, we do const name, son of a gun, what am I missing? Yep, so lens prop should just take that and go in. What am I doing wrong? Okay, so we bring R over there. We bring in name, and that should just work. But of course it doesn't work, because why would it? Oh, that's because of this. We need to move name up here. So sorry about that because there is no lens. Okay, so now this gets us the same sort of thing uh, and const don't hoist. That's a good good value, valuable lesson here. Const and lets don't hoist. Um, so anyway, what this does is pretty much sets it up like we had this name here, except uh, it's, it's just shorter, easier to work with, right? So using that, uh, we can do the same thing with the view, the over, and all of that. It just gets us a lens. So one of the things I wanted to note is you'll notice the return values like when we do over and view and little bits like that we actually on view get back whatever the value is but whenever we mutate the object or like uh, apply a transformation to the uh, wrapped object we at that point in time get the entire object back a copy of it with well sort of a copy, for the most part a copy, with it, with the uh, mutated uh, changes on it. So, and that's very important for doing uh, composition and things like that. So, now uh, anytime you use over or you set, you're going to get back the entire object back. So, what that gets us is, say we want to um, bring back a, uh, say we want to, I don't know, do another transformation on something. Like say we want to, uh, use a view and, uh, for instance, say we want to do our composition, but we only want to drill in on our view. So we want to go ahead and do this over, not the composition. Say we want to do this over, but we want to actually view what the change was. We don't really care about all that. You can do cool things like uh, r.compose and then with this composition we can do in r.view uh, passing in our lens which is going to be name and here we could do a r.over was basically the same thing we were doing before passing in again the name view and uh, we'll do make lower and uh, that's all we really need for that. Now that's going to get us a composition of this over and this view and all we need to do is pass the data into this composition. So what that's going to do um, is it's going to run through the over, it's going to make it lower, then it's going to return remember the object it's going to pass the object as the data into this view and then call view on it pulling out just the name attribute. So because these return you can actually chain all of the uh, data bits together just like you would do with a map on a functor. So even though we can map 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 we can actually compose the results of these together and each one isn't going to change each other uh, its previous state. So let me show you what this looks like. We get the same sort of thing, uh, except here we want this and we want to pass in band. So hopefully this doesn't blow up on me. Bam. So if you look down here at the bottom, notice how we get back KMFDM. We don't even need to do this anymore. We can just get rid of that. Um, and then we'll do uh, view compose. 
So if we look, bam, we actually took the result from this over and then took that as the data which got passed into this view function and then returned what it was supposed to return and gave the view back. So because of these and because of the way like mutations and things return, um, it makes it real easy to chain these together. Uh, as they return the modified data. So it's always good to keep in mind about the uh, bits there. So now one of the things you'll notice is just like normal composition, we are doing a right to left. So it's going to come in, the band's going to hit this, it's going to uh, do the over that we have set up there, uh, preloaded and uh, what is that? partially applied with our actual lens and the mutation. Then it's going to take the result of that, pass it into this function, which is ready to take data, and then return that back. So it's just a simple composition, and all we're doing is chaining the data as it goes through. OK, so now say we want to dig into members, right? Uh, say we want to get the list of members, and actually say we want to get the list of past members. So a way we could do that, and uh, let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and GC this stuff. Come down to here. Um, it you could go ahead and notice the prop how it only goes one level deep and grabs the name off of there. Um, say we wanted to go ahead and get the current members. Well, they also provide a lens path. And what we can do there is we will say uh, current members, except we'll spell it properly this time. And with those current members, we can just do r dot um, lens prop or lens path and then provide an array of the structure that we want to go down. So this array or this list could be built out. You can create a little machine or something like that that actually builds this little guy out for you. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Good call, chicken skills. All right. So current members, we want to jump in and we want to go members and we want to take those members and jump into current. Oops. So what this will get us is something that's uh, all ready to jump down and traverse into the current. So that's pretty much all we need to get that lens set up. And if we go ahead and just do a quick log and we'll call this uh, uh, view path. We can then go ahead and uh, let's just copy this, copy that. And actually, no, we don't need to do that. We'll just do r.view. And then we'll use our current members. And from those current members, we will pass in our band. So now, if uh, I coded this properly, that actually drills down, and now we have a lens that's pointed at the current members. If you notice, Sashka Knitsku, uh, Lucia, Jules, and Steve White, these are all the people that are there. So now we can jump in and uh, do that with the lens path, right? So say we want to do something a little cooler, like with our mutations here. Um, so what we could do is uh, provide, say, a mapping since that's an array and that current members is actually pointed to an array. Since an array is a functor, we can actually uh, do a mapping over it and map everything in there. So let's go ahead and use uh, r.prop and uh, see about calling lowercase on each of the uh, members that are there uh, in current. So we'll use our current members bit there. And actually, we will use make lower as our mapping function. OK? So what we want to do is uh, <clears throat> do an r.over. Uh, 
we are going to do cons right now. We'll just call this another, and then whenever we get it built, we'll change the name, of course. So we'll do r dot over, and we want to take our current members. And with our current members, uh, hey Spidey, sorry I had that big mess I had to clean up with the uh, coffee. I wasn't able to make it back in, but. I'm totally going to check out the video afterwards. Uh, yeah, if you guys haven't seen uh, Spidey88, it's pretty awesome. He's building this cool 1010 game. Um, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, hey, Proton, how's it going, sir? All right. Uh, what's the stream about? Uh, using functional lenses. Um, so I kind of uh, just digging in on how to use uh, the lenses in Ramda for doing mutation on your complex data structures that you might receive or have to work on. Um, so what we can do with this map.over is we'll actually do an r.compose and what we want to do is map, uh, we want to call map on this so and actually we don't even need to do the composition there we can just do a map so we'll do r dot map because it is a functor the array is um, and then on this we are going to call to lower I believe and now we can set up a mapping uh, this right here should get us that So we'll call this lower members, just for the heck of it. Why not? Uh, what's the philosophy behind lenses? It, they're just a way to focus in on complex data. It uses, um, it's basically a functor algebra, uh, and it kind of, it's a clever, clever use of functors. When we get to the composition of lenses, I'll kind of go over that a little bit, but it's just a way to provide an easy way for grabbing uh, data. Um, and changing it without mutating the actual original data. It's really awesome. Do you use Ramda? Yeah, I do. I use Ramda with uh, Redux and React and uh, Mithril. Uh, for my personal projects, I like coding in Mithril more than React because I use React at work. Um, so anyway, so now say we want to lower all these members. Remember that this is going to uh, be our mapping function that's going to get mapped over and we're going to map the array with a map which is going to pass the array in and then we're going to call two lowercase on each of those. But we need to do one more thing so we are going to need the compose. So let's go ahead and do that in a smaller function because right now we're mapping over that and we don't really, the two lowercase doesn't make sense on an object because we don't really want to call it on an object. Um, what we really want to call it on is get to that name attribute down there and we want to call it on that. So for that we're going to use just a quick composition and we'll do it with r.propped. So we'll say uh, lower names is what we'll call it and then lower names is going to be r.compose and we're going to compose in the last thing we want to do is r.map nope the last thing we want to do is lowercase uh, make lower let's get rid of all this and uh, the first thing that we need to do though is to actually pull out the name attribute. So we'll do r.name or r.prop and we will ask for the name attribute. So this is going to get us a function called lower name and what it's going to do is it's going to for each one of these on the right it's going to grab the name attribute take that name attribute pass it to make lower which is going to call lowercase on it and then return that back. So that should be set up ready to take our data. So now all we really want to do is uh, not even do that. We'll just log that. And here we'll go lower name. Okay. And we need to pass in the actual data itself. So we will do band here as the third parameter to that. Hopefully that doesn't error. 
And of course it errors. Two lowercase of undefined. Two lowercase of undefined. That's adorable. All right. So we do m.prop.name. We're going to call that on lower name. Yeah. Yeah, this is not a. Uh, this is like how to use JS the proper way kind of video, but not like how to use it except uh, all the mistakes I'm making here. Hold on. Let me see what's going on here. So we take our current members, which is going to be into current. <laughs> yeah, all oh, right on. Um, and then we're going to pass band in. So why? Why, 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 wonder Zian? So current members is going to grab that. And then the function we want to map over is going to be lower name. So we have make lower, which is going to be two lowercase of undefined. Yeah, JS is fun. It's a really, really, really great uh, language. Um, oh, and I know the problem. It's because we didn't uh, actually send in the map. My bad. So we need to r.map this and then use lower name as our mapping function. Sorry. My bad. I shouldn't have deleted that. So now if you notice, we get it back. And if you look at our current... This is kind of what we wanted, but it's not what we wanted, right? And the reason why is because the we applied the map to the actual data itself. So what it did was it gave us a list of the lowercase names there, but that's not really what we wanted. We wanted to actually lowercase the names and send them back as still in their name bit there. So what we'd have to do to do that is um, all right. So we need the actual mutation, all the lens, all of that to actually come back as the um, uh, basically bring the lens back. So to do that. Uh, show using an over for the map function is we need to actually bring an over for that map function right there right so our mapping function should actually be an over function as well so let's go ahead and implement that real quick all right see and this is why uh, I should have like just examples all right so what we really want to do here is let's 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 real talk about this just for a second is whenever we do our over we want the function itself see that mapping right there we want that to actually return the array of that so or bring back the name so what we could do is reuse our name lens here see how we have this name lens So with that, what we can do here is r.over, use our lens, uh, which is name, and then from there, uh, apply our function which was lower name or make lower now we don't need to actually pull it off the prop no reason to use that function and then that should be ready to take a uh, piece of data that runs through so hopefully this doesn't error of course it's going to error because I did not put that there in the right place. So we remove that and we put this here. 
now it'll run. Okay, so now if you notice, just by doing that real simple thing right there, we actually went in and changed just the names and brought them back. So instead of using a composition, we don't even need to use a lower name anymore. This feller can go away. All we did was just use a lens inside of a lens and had that actually go in and run the uh, function for us. So we pretty much did the map with the lens itself but then we use this map to actually map over each of those. So that's how you can go into like say an array or something like that. Um, it's, it's pretty handy uh, and it's just a, a simple way to use it. Notice the cool thing about this though is we never, all we did was put together these over functions and all that and we only ever specified the band once. So I mean really we could a better way of doing this instead of in the log statement, you could name all your mutations or put them together in some way or another and say, uh, let's see, what are we doing here? We'll call this lower current names. Right? And then basically take all of this over with everything except for the band. Uh, v and then we'll go to the end and I mean, we'll still need to take the band for now uh, here and then give what I like to call a paste. And then because this is a curried function, I can then just do lower current names and pass in band. See? That's the power of data last and currying is I can put together all these really complex, uh, uh, how would you say, modifications or things like that, but when it gets down to it, since I'm only passing the band in once, um, uh, it all knows how to work with the data as it flows through it. Like, this is uh, functional programming at its finest, I should say. Um, notice we're not doing anything procedural. Everything is just simple one-liner functions that define exactly what they do. Uh, and we can reuse that. So, for instance, even though this name we were using to reference uh, the name of this, it will reference anything that has a name. So, because I was able to... Uh, uh, since we have a name inside of our current members, uh, we can actually reuse that lens anywhere that there's an actual name, which is pretty neat. So that's how you would normally like say map over a value to change like values in there. You can also write functions like that say I only want to do something to one of them, right? Um, now, Ramda also provides a uh, really neat functions for building lenses that can select specific elements inside of a list or an array or things like that. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, I think that's where we're at. So we'll talk about getting the first item from the list. So say we want to go ahead and get from that current oh, I don't think we need make lower anymore or name or any of this maybe name uh, we'll leave that we'll just take the logs out why not uh, and then while we're at it why don't we just replace this with this and dd that and there only the logs are hidden okay so now say we want to go ahead and grab the first element there. So say we want to get uh, Raymond Watts. <laughs> so, uh, well, let's, well, no, let's just get Sasha there. Uh, Captain K, good old Captain K. So if we want to grab Captain K off of here, um, we can't really do it if you notice how we're using this lens path here. We can't really uh, do it so much uh, like that. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, and they provide another oops, function called, uh, we'll just do first, um, another function called uh, lens index. And lens index is useful for dealing with specific indexes in an array. So now I have something called first that's always going to point to, we'll just keep this open so we can see it. 
that's always going to point to the uh, first index there. Now, how did I want to do that? Did I show referencing with the index? So we'll do this with composing views, I guess. So say I want to grab and view the first one there. I can go ahead and we'll add a log and we can do uh, r.compose and here we will do r.view. Uh, the last thing that we want to do, the last thing we want to do is to grab first. So we're going to use first there and that's all we really need and the first thing we're going to do on this composition is actually go through and do an r.view on uh, current members. Okay. So now this is just going to put the current members if it doesn't throw an error. Oh, and it returns a function because I didn't pass in data. All right. So now we'll just do band. And let's actually again move this out. So we'll do const and we will call this uh, first current member. And first current member, oops, sorry, it's my first day. Uh, first current again member. So with this, we can just take this composition here, and because it's a composition, it should be ready to take any data. So we'll just go to the end here, and we'll grab this. And we should probably actually call it view first, but because that, that should really be a lens there. Um, but anyway, that's ready to take band. So we can delete this, this, and this, get rid of those little uh, bits there, and we can get rid of all this composition since we already have moved it out. And here we will just do first current member. So now this should just show Captain K if it doesn't error. Oops. So we will do first. And we can get rid of this now. Yay. So anyway, now we can use that and get the uh, first, which is really neat. But this is kind of ugly here where we have to do all of these um, uh, you know, chaining a view to a view to a view. There's a much better way of composing uh, lenses together. So say we want to compose something. So we'll get rid of this, we'll get rid of this, we'll leave first. The best way to do this, or a really good way to do this, is to actually compose the lens itself. Um, and you can do that with r.compose, but there's a little trick to it, and I'll show you why, uh, or I'll try to explain why that trick happens. Um, so say we do the same thing as, uh, let's just get rid of this, and we'll still keep the compose, but this will actually compose a lens for us. Okay, so when you're composing lenses together, so say we have that current members, you need to normally when you're doing a composition, you reference how you want it run from right to left. With lenses though, you actually specify the path from left to right, even though it's run right to left. Um, I'll try to explain this in a second here, like why that is. It kind of has to do with the fact that it's a functor and that the way that you use these lenses is like your functions like view and over and things like that. They actually provide a functor function that tells it how to work on the actual functor that's being passed to it. So because of the way the chain is set up on this compose, it, it kind of folds like... Um, recursion does. And as soon as I get it built out, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. So 
if I want to compose this, I need to start with the left side. Normally, when you're doing a composition, you would think you would want to reference the most shallow element last, but you actually want to do the most shallow element first um, because of the way that it sets up its call chain. So what you want to do here, or what we want to do here, is get current members because the current members is actually the... Uh, the root element. Uh, we're going to go from members to current. And then so the next one that we want is first. right? So now setting the composition up like that, all we have to do is do log and we'll do our dot view and we'll pass in our first current and for our and that's all we need. Okay, so now this should log R first and we should get the same answer back if it's not a function. And it is a function because we did not pass in our data. People keep forgetting to pass in their data, specifically me. So if we pass in our data, which is our band, we get it back. So now the reason why this is not, uh, this doesn't compose uh, right to left like you would think it should is because this lens, if we look at the lens bit here, it basically provides a functor. This is the type signature of it, right? So this, as its first argument, requires a functor function. And it's basically a function that's going to take a value and then return a functor that knows how to work with that value. And then it's going to want to bring in data. So, for instance, when we do view, what view is doing is providing a functor that ignores the mapping but adds what the value is. So no matter what, it's always going to, if you were to somehow able to pass in a map function into that, like a, a mapping functor, uh, maybe like using an over, basically how you use your set, um, it's not going to respect that. It's going to override it. So then it's going to pass in as the first parameter its function. So view has its own functor function, uh, over has its own functor function, and set has its own functor function. So it's going to pass that in. And then it's going to return a function ready to take the data. So if you think about that, when we call view here, it's going to go in here and pass in the view functor. And that's going to return to this one a function that's set up ready to take the data to this one. And that is going, the function that comes from here is going to act like the function that would be the functor function inside of the current members. So whenever current members does its getter and, and calls that functor function, it's actually passing the data to the function that this one passed. So this is going to bring in and pass all of the members, members as it's found. And then it's going to go to the first, and the first is going to take that value and then pass in the uh, other function, which would be view or whatever. So that's why it, it uh, kind of folds or that's why it's specified this way. And the best way to think about this is thinking about recursion and how recursion works in JavaScript. So if I'm, what are Ramda functions you find yourself using most? <laughs> Absolute vodka, haha. <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't know, I, I use them all. Um, not all of them, but I just use whatever I need. Uh, I use compose a lot because, you know, the whole thing is composing functions. I use map a lot. It just depends what I'm doing. Um, I don't think, I guess compose would be the one I use the most um, because it's the most that's used in functional programming, you know. Um, so anyway, when it gets to there and it gets to first, first is then going to take the data, which is the current members, and it's going to run its getter on it. And that getter is going to grab the first element off of whatever current is. And then it's going to take that value and then pass it to its functional function, or its functor function, which was the function that view passed in. So anyway, the best way to think of it is just like recursion on a JavaScript stack. Every time that I make a call, I add, uh, let me actually, so every time I make a call, 
I uh, make a call and that goes on the stack and then it goes through the recursion function sees that I make another call that goes on the stack and then I wait until I get another condition that call gets or if that's good it goes on the stack but as soon as my function calls with the edge case it then folds and collapses all of those function calls passing the value of each of the previous calls into the last one which then returns the result. So this is the same thing that's going on here. When we build the lenses, we're building the stack up until it receives the data. Once it receives the data, it's going to fold it down into its single value. And like that's the beauty of lenses. Uh, it's such a beautiful use of functors. Like streams, um, not really like streams because those are more just waiting for something and then chunking data. Um, streams, I don't know if that would be a good way to look at it. Although it's kind of similar, I would compare it more to how recursion works on a JavaScript stack um, with head and tail. Yes, yep, yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, peeling it off, peeling it off. Um, so anyway, that's where you'll hear a lot of people say that it implements a foldable, uh, like if you go and learn the mass of these, um, the foldable uh, algebra, or basically what we would consider a reduce inside of an array, um, but it, this isn't really a reduce because it's not called explicitly. It still implements a fold because it has to call back on itself passing the values. So anyway, that's how you get, uh, that's, that's basically why they work, um, is because of that, that call chain. And that's how you're able to dig deep into these. But just know that when you're composing lenses together, because of that little whoop-de-wop and how they're built and then executed, you actually execute from left to right instead of right to left. Okay, cool. So now that we know that and we know how to get that, we can show that with... Uh, all right, talked about that. And then we can show how it makes it easier to get the first plays of the first member, right? So now, say I want to go ahead and grab, uh, I went kind of deep there, right? So say we want to get the first plays, or say we want to get the actual plays and the first one. We could make another one that says first plays, right? And this lens is going to do the same sort of thing, except we're going to r.compose. And the first thing we want to do is, uh, first we're going to need a plays. So we'll do const plays is equal to r.lensprop. And we make them like this so they're easily composed, because maybe we have something else inside of plays, right? There might be some really neat stuff inside of there. Um, so what we could do with plays is actually just grab plays, or not need stuff inside of there, but we might have another plays key somewhere in our, our structure. Um, so instead of going into current, like for instance on here, um, see how we can grab the first, do whatever, this has plays as well. So if we break them off into small composite or small components that can be composed together, uh, it makes it a lot easier. So now say we want to get the first plays off of the first, right? So now we can compose. Um, the last thing we want to do is again, uh, or the first way that we want to reference it is to take plays. So we now bring in plays and I get to reuse my first, right? So now we can actually compose this in into our other one. See how we have first current? We can make another one that is first current first plays. Um, but we're just going to call this playsies. Or we'll call it tickles. Because I haven't said, no, tickles is kind of like torture. Uh, we will make this rainbows. Why not? Add some joy to the world. So rainbows is going to be our doc compose. And we can compose these together. So since the first thing we really want to do is grab the first current member and then after that we want to, or the, the bit we want to get after that is first plays. We can then compose these together 
and bring in rainbows. If people can spell it. And that's the beauty of composition. So if you notice, just by putting that together, uh, we could build some really complex ways with really simple lenses. Uh, and just using composition, we can build some really crazy uh, ways to jump in there. So as we know, this is synth. So say we want to get uh, the third one off of here. Um, it's just a matter of creating something called third and doing things like that. So it's, it's pretty awesome uh, just being able to take these lenses and have smaller components and just hook them together and compose them in really simple reusable ways that you can use later on. Okay. All right. So we did that. Now, this is the cool, another cool thing. So this is showing how we can compose uh, lenses themselves to get uh, really, really deep... Um, functions or like really really deep uh, into some sort of nested array or things like that. So let's actually try mutating. So we'll do a, a, a multi-update and we'll make three changes to this. The first thing we'll do is we'll lowercase the name. So we're going to take this name here, we're going to lowercase it. And then the next thing we want to do is omit plays from uh, the past. So from all of these, we want to map over and we want to omit the plays from each of these. So this will be just because we don't care about the past members and what they did, but we do care about their names. Um, say we also want to, uh, uh, we can go in and then lowercase all the current names. So we're going to make those three modifications and we're going to see uh, kind of the best way to approach that, I guess. So let's move, let's get rid of some of this stuff that we don't need anymore. So we're going to need name. Uh, we're going to need make lower. So let's go ahead and grab make lower. This will be our function. Um, do we really care about these though? I don't think we're even using these anywhere else. No, we are not. So I mean, we could reuse them, but heck, well. Uh, well, we already have the lower current names. We already have all that, right? So let's go ahead and I'll show you a really neat thing. You can actually compose together because of the return values on the uh, mutating or the modifying states um, or the modifying functions. You can actually return um, or you can compose all of these modifications together. So let's go ahead and make something called mods. And what mods is, is going to be the list of modifications that we want to do. So the first one's really easy and because uh, we've already pretty much done that we want to go ahead and do a r dot over and with this r dot over we're just going to get the name lens and we're just going to do make lower okay and that's it so remember the data comes in as the third attribute so since this is Ramda we can actually curry the data for the third attribute which is what we want because essentially we're gonna chain these together so let's go ahead and see uh, how well this works so we'll do a log and we're going to log um, our dot compose and we're going to just spread mods over that And then here we're going to pass in the data, which is banned. Okay, so if you notice, it went ahead and it put in KMFDM all lowercase. So cool. We got our first mod done with just this simple line of code and just spreading these over a composition. All right, so we have that. That's pretty awesome. What was the next thing we wanted to do? Uh, that was the easy one. So now let's go ahead and omit plays. So we're going to do a, let's go ahead and add one of these. We're going to do an R dot over. And for here, we're going to, uh, what are we grabbing? The current, right? So we just need, uh, what happened to my current members? Here they are. Okay, so there's our little current members. 
uh, and we're going to use that as our lens since we already have the lens built out. We're going to do current members. And isn't it neat how I'm just able to reuse all this stuff and just be like, oh, I need this lens for that and this lens for that. Um, so we're going to take the current members. And what do we want to map over this? The thing we want to do is we're going to get back an array. So we pretty much want to our dot over and what are we doing? We are omitting plays in past. So actually, we don't want to do that. Uh, let's take current members and heck, we'll just do it this way. This will get us for past members. Now we have a lens that points at past. And there we go. Bob's your uncle. Whose uncle? My uncle? The monkey. Um, and let's put our simple ones here. So we'll move these up here. Okay, and these are. Okay. Beautiful. And I guess we don't really need these, right? Yeah, no need to have those. We can get rid of rainbows, we can get rid of that. All right. All right, so now we're good. Okay. So now that we have our past members, I guess we don't really need first current member either because we're not doing anything with that. This is really all we need are these lenses. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and map over each of the past current members or past members. So we have our past members as our lens. And the function that we want to run is we want to omit those. But remember, we're going to be getting a... Um, an array back. So we want to omit plays. Okay, let's give that a save. It's probably going to error give me a function back. Nope. So if you notice, we went ahead and just by putting that simple thing in, we now mapped our map and got rid of the, uh, we omitted it, right? So, but don't worry, our actual data itself has not been touched, right? So here is our data band. And even though we mutated the holy bummer out of that, you'll notice that not all the original data, again, has not been changed. It has not been mutated in any way, shape, or form, which is good for when you need to make changes and save something back up to a database. This is where object-oriented programming and stuff um, kind of falls down because of the side effecting. Again, I hate to say it, but JavaScript is not object-oriented. I mean, if you really enjoy writing a bunch of uh, extra code, just to make something work the way it's not supposed to work, then that's cool. Like, that's awesome. I understand that. But uh, just know, if you do it functionally, it's uh, you save yourself a lot of code. Like, imagine trying to do this mutation either procedurally or with a um, uh, doing an object-oriented bit, right? Like, it's going to be really, really hard to get it to where it doesn't mutate. So this is the way uh, JavaScript was designed to work. Um, if you like being wrong, that's fine. No, I'm, uh, I like object oriented, but I gotta say, man, uh, lexical scoping, uh, functions as first class objects, uh, all of that, that, that leads to the only object oriented language that used, uh, lexical scoping was small talk. And everyone poo pooed on that because of that. But, I don't know. There's a reason why we don't have all the stuff that object-oriented programmers need, and that's because we're not project or object-oriented. Now, I you still need to learn that. So if there's that guy still learning stuff, still learn that. Like it's important because there's so many people out there that write object-oriented code because they haven't really figured it out yet. Um, and functional is completely different. Anybody, I'm teaching my kid. Uh, how to do object-oriented programming. It's an easy mental model to hold. That's why you learn it uh, in your early CSS or your early CS, but you don't really learn functional till your later CS um, because it's a different, it's hard to think of a separation of how you say uh, data. Oh, am I still sharing? Oh, you can't even see that the past changed. I'm so s sorry. Boop. So there, see how the past has changed? My bad. My ugly mug was covering that up. So sorry there. Um, 
anyway, that that's my rant. Uh, I feel lucky to have a job. Hated Java in college. Yeah, I I feel really good about uh I love doing the JavaScript thing, and it's really great. Um, you can write some really complex stuff in JavaScript. Like if you get away from the OO and you get away from uh, bits like that, you can write some really complex stuff in just a few lines of code um, and make it expandable, testable, uh, things like that. It's just a matter of learning functional programming and thinking of separation of behavior from uh, uh, data. That's the one thing that object-oriented people have a hard time with, is separating behavior from data, because we're so used to keeping the data wrapped in behavior. Um, and I was an object-oriented programmer for, what, 12 years? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's get it done, but let's get it done right. Uh, all right, so now the next thing we need to do, uh, the last thing on our list, uh, hopefully it's going to be as easy as the other one, is we need to go ahead and uh, lowercase all the names. So we already did this with that other mapping, but we'll do this again. So we'll, we can take the current members, bam, and then um, we don't really want to r.map over it because... <laughs> well, and it's the same thing. Uh, JavaScript, like when you try to write, uh, like, oh man, it, it breaks my heart. I see all these people using TypeScript and things like that. And they're writing all this extra code just to avoid a couple runtime errors that could be easily caught. Like so much lines of code of extra stuff that they need to maintain. And oh man, I feel so sorry for the people that have to deal with that. That's when I quit that job. Like the second uh, they're like, hey, look, we want you to do a bunch of extra work that's going to be very brittle and hard to work with. I'm like, sorry, I'm out. Um, okay, so now what we want to do, like I said, is we want to go ahead and use the same uh, technique that we used before and uh, do another over inside of this over, passing in... Um, uh, the map so sorry we want to map over with name so what we want to do is do the same thing with map except we're going to r dot map and then we're going to do an r dot over and what the r dot over is going to do is um, provide name uh, we'll use our, our name thing and then we're going to do lower or make lower okay so now if we run that, bam. So there's all three of our mutations. And we did that in just a few lines of code. I don't even think we needed the first. So like we didn't need this. Uh, do we need plays? No, we didn't really need plays. So let's just 2DD and we'll put these here. So just in these lines of code, uh, we were able to do this complex mutation. Why are classes coming to JS? It doesn't make sense. Well, it's they shouldn't come, and they're not really classes. And I don't think there's a problem with classes. The problem is the extend, um, because people think that it's going to behave like classical inheritance. I like class, but I don't like the extend part of it. Class is neat because I use, like when I'm doing functors or making like uh, computational contexts, sometimes I like to use a class, um, like if I'm going against the fantasy land spec or something like that. It makes it easier. Um, I'll use class just to specify that so I can work with my this bindings and stuff. So I don't think class is the problem uh, because that's just syntactical sugar to set up your, your prototype on your constructor function. The problem is when you put extends in there. Um, that's where the real error is. Uh, class itself is great. But anyway, like I said, I don't work for places that do that. That's, that's not what I do. Uh, second that happens, I'm like, I'm out because they've they've lost their way. Um, okay, so anyway, if you notice, we did um, all of these. Uh, we changed the name. We uh, made all of these lowercase. And we went ahead and omitted those just with these simple one-liners, right? 
and all of these are reusable. So the cool thing about this mods uh, here is this can be something that's put together. So like if you want to set up a, a promise chain or something like that, um, well, one of the things this works very well for is uh, say you're doing transformation on data. Uh, say you're moving from a YAML file to a JSON file and uh, you need to parse through the AST or the abstract syntax tree that comes back from parsing a YAML file. You can easily use lenses to dig in on your AST, which is a known, a known structure, and then use that to build lenses to point to your output structure. So you can have all your modifications, all your lenses, and everything set up, like build a little factory that puts it all together for you um, to work on a dynamic structure. So we run into this like going from uh, Terraform and having to use Terraform to uh, write to like say the AWS uh, API gateway or, or not gateway, like to write a specific configuration. Um, you can specify all your stuff in uh, Terraform, but then when it gets down to the nitty gritty and you need to actually deploy it and do things like that, you can go over that configuration and change the configuration to something that uh, AWS could use for the AWS SDK. Um, so it works real handy on that uh, and, and things like that. I also have used this for parsing CSS uh, ASTs. Um, and uh, making modifications on that AST, and then recreating a new uh, style sheet based on the new on the new newly changed AST. So now I can dynamically like work on or change uh, different parts of my CSS by parsing it into an abstract syntax tree, making changes to that tree, and then pushing that tree to become CSS, like rendering that AST again after it's everything's been changed. So, like there there's so many uses for these. Um, I'm going to be using them for React or uh, Redux um, instead of doing the reducers. Uh, I think I came up with a pretty good pattern to use lenses with reducers and still get the same flexibility um, uh, that it provides. So we'll go that way. Uh, that's This is why I'm kind of showing this is for that, that, that feed that I'm doing. Okay, so now we want to uh, now this is where it gets a little complicated. So say, <laughs> this is where it gets complicated. So say we want to build data based on our current data, right? So let's say uh, even though this is getting us a current and a past, say somewhere in our code uh, we actually need an all list. So we could in the code when we're building it out actually build out and create the all list uh, on the spot. But that's not very good. It's not very. Uh, it's not very nice, I should say. Um, it would be really nice to just change it as the data comes in and use that data. So if anything else does all, it also doesn't need to build out the all. So let's go ahead and actually take in. Uh, let's make a new uh, bit on here called all. Uh, and then we want to go through and take all of the uh, names or all of the current members and then all the past members and add them together in one list there. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll just reuse this same mods thing since it's going to be uh, modified. And let's go ahead and do the first bit. Um, so how do we want to do this? Okay. So for the first bit, this is where it gets a little tricky because of, uh, we'll just write it out. So say I were to do an r.compose here. So what we need to do is access current as the lens. And then we need to use current to map over the data. But as you'll see here, when I do this composition, uh, we come in and actually let's do a map over. So we'll do an over here. And the lens that we want to change is, uh, oh, and actually we need to add, we need to add an all. So let's go ahead and we'll make a all members. That's right. Sorry, I was getting a little ahead of myself. Always start at the end at the smallest unit and work your way back to the more complex unit. Um, so this is all members. 
And this is really neat because I, even though this doesn't exist, I can still get a lens, oops, I can still get a lens that points to it. Let's actually do it like this. DD, and then we'll go back, delete, delete to M all. Okay, and then this will be all. So the first modification that we need to do is throw an error because we don't have anything in here. So the first thing we need to do is a set. That's, that's definitely the first thing that we want to do is a set. So we'll do an R dot compose or an R dot set and then we're going to pass in our lens of all members, right? So we want all members to be set to an empty array. Real simple just so we can get something to work with. So if we look down here, uh, am I showing my face? No, I'm not good. Uh, down here in the bottom, notice how we now have all added to there. So cool, that's the first step of the array. Now we just need to simply concat the other ones. Now, this is where it's gonna get ugly, so let's see what happens when we actually concat this in. So we're gonna do an r.over, and we're going to do all members and what we want to do is r dot concat but we want to do r dot view and uh, bring in our current members and That's that with the over. But we need to actually pass in the data there. So you'll notice this is violating a pure function. So this will work. Yep, no semicolons. Oh, this will work if we put commas. Yeah, I don't use semicolons. Semicolons are useless. They're pointless. Data is not defined. We need it to be banned. So if you notice, we brought that in, and it still put them in there, right? So now we have all, and it actually concatted uh, this and put it in there, but it did not actually change uh, what was going on over here. So if we jump over here, go a little page up, notice how it didn't change any of the current members there, um, but what it did was put those there. Now you'll notice that uh, we are violating a pure function here. So since we are doing that, notice how we bring band in here, and that's coming in from this closure that we have set up here. This is a big no-no. This is a huge no-no. Um, we don't want to do this because it's not a pure function. I cannot, there's no referential transparency here. Um, so what we need to do is move this into a pure function. So what we're going to do is we'll do lens concat. And what we want to do with lens concat is take in a function that takes uh, a source or a target and a source and then returns a function that brings in data or that receives data and then returns the concat. So this will do an r.view and it's going to do that on a I'm sorry. So we want an r.concat and then here we want to do an r.view but we want to bring that in And we want the whole over, actually, is what we want. My bad. My bad. So we'll basically just take all of this. Why not, right? Boop, boop. Uh, we'll do that. And we'll go to the end and P that in. Okay. So now this is going to be our target this is going to be our source
that's going to be data and this is going to return a function with the data so it's going to call that with the data alright so now we can replace this and make it pure so now we just do lens concat and from there we bring in the target which is all members and we bring in the source which is current members and I believe that's it that should do it it's probably gonna error nope it's not okay so now we have a pure function this function is pure there's not there's no shared data everything is passed in as expected so now we need to bring in the actual past so that's just as easy as going all members uh, keeping all members and replacing current members with past members okay so now that's good now we got that mutation and we've added that in there so now you'll notice over here on the right we have our all which has Raymond Watts, Enesh, Gunther, uh, Sashka Kanitsku and Jules so because uh, we probably want this current to the other one and this is a composition we want to run the past members first so the concat happens the way that we would expect it to and now we have Sasha or Captain K, we got Lucia, Jules, Steve, and then Raymond Watts, Nash, blah, blah, blah. So now we can take this even one step further because we have all the members. Uh, say we only want to bring back their names. Uh, and then that's, that's really all we want. We want to return it with, as an array of their names. Um, maybe we don't even need the name thing. All we really need to do now is r.over and of course that data will be passed to us and we will do all members of course and with all members we will do a r.map and we will do that with an r.prop and we'll take the prop of name and again we're not using the uh, there's no point in bringing back the other bit um, the actual whole data structure so we're just gonna do a destructive map on that I was doing air quotes because it's not really destructive oh but I need to put this in okay all right so now we have the list of everything just as that so if we want to then map it over uh, and actually make it lowercase we can do in our doc compose here uh, and actually what we'll do is we'll do a const and do lower name and this will be a function that does our doc compose and brings in uh, last thing we want to do is make lower and the first thing we want to do is our dot prop name so then we can just bring this in and use that as our mapping function and this will lowercase all of those for us Bam. So now we have our mutation that's based on data. It's written in a pure way and it's really only done with a few functions. So, And a lot of this again can be reused for different parts. Uh, it's just a little something to do. So anyway that's pretty much all I have on lenses. Uh, if you missed it or whatever go ahead and check the video feeds. I'm also going to upload this to uh, YouTube because I've been getting some complaints about uh, sometimes the stream kind of lags or whatever for the uh, watching videos. So I'm going to throw this on YouTube and uh, be able to link to that. So 
Um, if you don't follow me on, I'm going to put a couple links in. I put a link up yesterday, which is kind of an overview that ex describes this in a very nice way. And I'll also throw a link up for a really good article that explains the maths behind all these and like why they work and why they're, they're so solid. Um, but anyway, I hope today you learned that these are uh, very versatile uh, and very easy ways to work on complex data structures. Um, and I guess that's all I got. So if you guys want, uh, hopefully this Saturday I'll be going back to the React app. Uh, got a few things going on there. Um, had a epiphany about a better UI case, so we're going to kind of strip it off and redo things. <laughs> KMFDM, kind of Lord for the merit. So anyway, that is all I got. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.